Code Explained says hi. Today we're going to create a 95% original Flappy Bear game using JavaScript. So people with basic knowledge on JavaScript can build this game, like uh, a basic knowledge on objects, functions, uh, operators. Uh, it will be enough to start creating this game. So let's see a preview of our game. We have here a get ready state. To start the game, you should click on the canvas. Then you also need to click on the canvas to keep the bird flapping. When you hit one of the pipes or the ground, it's a game over. Then if it's a game over, we show the user to the, the, the actual score and also the best score. To restart the game, you should click exactly in the start button here, not anywhere on the canvas. Okay, let's go. So for the HTML part, we'll need to create a very basic HTML code. Uh, we need to set a title for our page. Then we will need to link or load a font from Google. Inside our body, we will need to create our canvas element with an ID, a width and a height. And also we need to create or link our game.js file to our HTML file. Until now, you will see just a blank page. So we need to add some styling, uh, which is the border. And also we need to center our canvas. So if you wanna follow the tutorial step by step, you will need to load some uh, starter template, which has these files here, an index and a game.js files, which are empty. Then an image, which uh, is the sprite.png image, which has the background, the foreground, the pipes, the bird, the get ready and the game over messages. And also the audio files, the flap, die, head, the score and the swooshing. To download the starter template, you will need to click on this link in the description. Uh, you will need to go to the repos and then show exactly, choose exactly the original Flappy Bird JavaScript. Then you'll need to download the starter template by downloading the files. Uh, then open uh, your zip file and uh, copy the starter template to your desktop. So now I will call this uh, Flappy Bird and I will open it using my text editor. We have here the index.html. I will go and create a basic HTML, then a title, and also I will link uh, the Taiko font from Google. And then create the element or the canvas element with ID bird, the width of 320 pixels and the height. And also I will need to link the game.js file. Now let's run a live preview of our file. There's nothing, so I will need to add uh, some styling, like a border. Now you can see the canvas. Then I will center the canvas. And now let's get back to the logic part. To draw the canvas, you will need first to select the canvas element and then get the context 
it will return methods and properties that will allow us to draw to the canvas. Then I will create a function called draw. The function draw here will handle all the drawing we do to the canvas. Then a loop function that will call the draw function. Why a loop function? We need a loop function because we need to uh, update our game every second. So inside the loop function, I will use the request animation frame, which will take in a, uh, a callback function, which is our loop function here. Then I will need to call the function loop just one time. So our request animation frame here, in average, will call the loop function 50 times per second. Now let's say we have done the bird at this position, then we need to draw or to move down the bird to the bottom. If we do this just like that, this will draw two birds to our canvas, which means we need first to get rid of the first bird or of the first things we drawn to the canvas before drawing a new things, which means we need to clear the canvas each time we update our game. To clear the canvas, I will need to draw a rectangle which has the same dimensions as our canvas which means the same width and the same height. Uh, to draw a rectangle to the canvas, you will need to set the color with you want to fill the, uh, the rectangle. So I will use the property fill style equals to this color here, the color of the sky. Then I will use the method fill rect, which takes in the x and y position of our uh, rectangle. So the x is 0, the y is 0, which means the top left corner of our uh, canvas. We said the rectangle has the same uh, dimensions as the canvas, means the same width and the same height. From these two lines of code, we will get this. Then all what we need to complete the game is to draw all the other images, the background, the foreground, the pipes. Now, to make uh, the game a real one, all we need is to update the position of these images, which means I will need an update function. The draw function will handle the drawing, and the update function will update our game, like the position of our uh, images. I also need to create a variable called frames, which I will I set to zero. And then each time I call the loop function, I will increment that variable by one. And this way here, I will keep track of how many frames I draw to the canvas. Now let's talk about how to draw an image to the canvas. This is our sprite image. Let's say now we just need to draw the game over image here. So this is our source image and we need just to draw the game over message or image and on the other side we have our destination canvas this is where we need to draw this uh, image first we need to load our image so i will create a constant called sprite equals new image so i will create an image object using the image constructor then i will set the source property of our image. Now, inside our source image, this game over here message has an X position. I added an S before the X for the source. So the game over here has a source X position and a source Y position, then a source height and a source width. Also, when we need to uh, draw the game over in our canvas, we should give these parameters. The destination X position, the destination Y position, the destination with it and the height. The height and the with it on the destination canvas might be the same as the ones on the source image or different. So you might need to make your image bigger when you draw to the canvas or smaller. 
To draw an image to the canvas, I will use the draw image method. So I'm going to say context.drawImage. The draw image method will take in these parameters the image itself, the x and y position on the source image, the width, and the height. And then the x and y position on the destination canvas, and then the width and the height. So it's simple the image, the x, y, and the width and the height on the source image, the x and y and the width and height on the destination canvas. Okay, now we have here a lot of uh, images or contents the background, the foreground, the pipes, the birds, etc. So each time we need to create uh, an object with a name. So, for example, the name would be background, uh, foreground, pipes, bird, etc. Then inside our uh, object, we have the properties like the source x, the source y position of the image, also the width and the height. I didn't say source width and source height because simply the width and the height on the source image are the same on the destination canvas, which means we're not changing the, the dimensions of the images from the source image to the canvas image. Then the X and Y position of our uh, image, the X and Y position on the destination canvas. And then for every object, we need a draw method. Inside, I will just say context.drawImage. The image, the source X position, the source Y position, the width on the height. Then the X on the destination canvas, the Y position, the width on the height. The width on the height on the source image are the same as the ones on the destination canvas. Now to simply draw uh, this image, for example, we need to go inside our draw function, then uh, use the name of our object, then dot the draw method. This is how we will draw all the images uh, in our game. Now let's talk about fit an image to our canvas. What I'm talking here is, for example, if you try to draw uh, your uh, background image to the canvas, you will get something like this. So the background image doesn't fit into your canvas. To fix the problem, I will just need to draw another background image in this position. Now the question is, what's that position? Uh, so for both the images, the background images here, so we have two, they both have the same Y position, right? So I will just use two lines of code. So this one here for this image here, and this one here for the second one. So we said they have the same Y position. So they have the same Y position. And then for the first one, it has this, that X position. And then this is the width of the image. So for the next or the second image here, the background image, it will have this uh, X position, this that X plus this that with it. Right. Let's now talk about drawing the bird. So our constant name here will be bird. Uh, the bird here has this Y and X position. So X is 50 and Y is 150 pixels. Then the width is 34 and the height is 26 pixels. You can calculate that yourself uh, from the source image. Now, the thing you need to know or understand about our bird object is that we have an animation array inside it. Why? Because we have different images of the bird. With those different images, we will create an animation. So uh, here's the idea. This is the uh, source X uh, position and the source Y position of this image. But for the next one, this is X, uh, X and Y position in the third one. So in our game, the bird is flapping. To make the bird flapping, we need to create an animation with these images here. So we'll go and draw this image, then this one, then this one. But we're not going directly to this one. We need first to go from this 
then this one, then this one, and again this one, then this one, this one, and so on. To make that easy for us to code, we will just add another line of code here, or an object, with the x and y position of the second one, which means we will go from this image to this one, to this one, to this one. Then the first uh, image, again this one, this one, this one. So this is how we make our bird flapping. So to create that animation, I will need uh, a property called frame, which I will set to zero. Then inside our draw uh, method, I will need to create a variable called bird. So uh, we need first, before drawing uh, the bird, we need to know which one of these four here images we want to draw. So the bird here is equal to this that animation, our array, with index this that frame. So if the frame is set to zero, then we are in this case, which means we're drawing this uh, bird here. If we, it's one, this one, two, and three. So now all we need to create this animation here is to change the frame, increment the frame every period. Then of course I will need to use the draw image method, which takes in the bird uh, source x position and the bird source y position. Here we need to center our bird. To do that, I will just need to subtract uh, the half, the width uh, from the x position and the half, the height of the y position. So let's go now and type in the code for this part of the logic. Let's head over our game.js file, then select our canvas using get element by id method. Then get the context of our canvas. I will need to create some uh, game variables like the frames variable, which I will set to zero. Then I will create a function called draw and the function called update and the loop function. I will call the loop function just one time. Inside the loop function, we'll call the update and draw function, increment the frames, and then use the request animation frame to call our loop. Now we need to clear the canvas using a rectangle. And the, we will use the fill rect method, which has the same dimensions as the canvas. So this is what we get. So let's go and create or load our sprite sprite image. Now let's go and create the background uh, object. Let's define its properties. So for the source x, for example, uh, I can use brackets to define them. So it's zero, then the source y is zero. The width is 275. I already did this before starting the tutorial. So if you want to just copy them, uh, inside our draw function, we'll use the draw image uh, method now we go inside our draw function and say background.draw if I refresh we can see our image but it's not fit in our canvas so I will need to copy this line of code and for the x position I will add the width of our uh, background. So now you can see that it's done. Let's also uh, uh, draw or uh, create the foreground object. So I'm gonna also set uh, the properties for the foreground. So for the source exposition is 276. 0, 224 for the width, 
and the height the x and the y position is the canvas dot height minus the height of the foreground I will use the same code here then I will call the draw method if I refresh okay it doesn't fit again so I will need to copy this two times and then for the x position I will add the width of the foreground now you can see that it's fit okay now I will need to create uh, the bird uh, object so the bird object here has an array which uh, has the the source uh, uh, x and y position for every uh, image so now the first image here has this x and y position second uh, the third also all they all have the same x position by the way I will copy the second one and put it uh, at the end now I will uh, set x and y position of the bird then the width and the height then uh, the frame is set to zero now I will create the draw method I'll just copy this here but I will create a variable called bird so here I'm gonna say bird instead of this now I will go and call the bird.draw method now you can see our bird there now if I change the frame here you can see that the bird is uh, like flapping so I will need to center the, the bird so I'm gonna uh, subtract the half the width it and the half the height let's now go and uh, create the get ready message object so I'm gonna say const get ready equals so this is the image here so I'm gonna set the properties like always for the source x is 0 for the source y is 228 the width the height the x position is the center of the canvas minus uh, half the width so this is how we center well our get ready message this is the y position then the draw method I will just copy this again then I will go and uh, call the draw method so now you can see the get ready message let's also create our uh, game over message I will just go and copy this change this to game over so this is the image we're gonna be using I will just change the X position and the Y position for the source image the width the height and here we will need to center again the message the width is now 90 and now I will call the draw method that's good so let's get back now to our logic part now you can see that some images are on top of the others to fix that we need to implement the game state what I mean is in our game we have three uh, game states the get rid of state the game state and the game over state so for example we are not going to show the get rid of message unless it's the get rid of state in terms of code I will need an object called state inside we have the properties get ready game and over and a current uh, property this current property is how we keep track of the state we are in so for example if the current is equal to zero which means we are in the get rid of state if it's one we are in the game state if it's two we are in the game over state so this will remain constants the only thing that changes the only property that changes 
is the current state. Let's say now the player is in the get rid of state and he clicks on the canvas. What will happen is that we will need to go from the get ready state to the game state, which means we will take the current state from zero to one. Now, if the user is in the game state and he clicks on the canvas, we won't get to any of the states. Instead, we need to make the bird flop. So our bird object here has a method called flop like draw which we didn't create yet and we will talk about it later in the tutorial and then if the player loses the game and it is in the game over state and then he clicks on the start button we just need to go from the two for the current to zero again which is for the get ready state in terms of code again, I will need to add an event listener to our canvas, which is on click event. This will fire up a function whenever the user clicks on the canvas that will take in the event uh, variable here, which is the click event. Inside the function here, I will use the switch statement. So each time the user clicks on the canvas, we need to check what is the current state. So, for example, if the current state is the get rid of state, we say that it will go from here to the game state. So I'm going to say state.current equals state.game. Then, if the case or if the state current is the game state, we need to make the bird flap. And then, if the current state is the game over state, we said we need to go back to the get rid of state again to restart the game. Now, one update for our get ready object is that we only need to draw the get ready message if the state that current is really the get ready state. And also, we only need to show the game over message if the current state is the game over state. So, let's go and update our code. So, let's go and create uh, the game state object to control the game. First, we need to add an event listener to our document which will fire up a function that will take in the event okay so the the game state object here we said it has this properties the current state get ready state which is set to one here I don't say equal then the game state, then the over state. Now I will use the switch statement. So if the current state is the get rid of state, we need to go to the game state in break. And if it's the game state, we need to make the bird flop in break. And if it's the game over state, we need to go back to the get rid of state and then break. Let's go and add the flap method so we won't get any errors. We're not adding yet nothing yet to the method. We said that we will only show the get rid of state. Uh, the get rid of message if it's the get rid of state and also we need to show the game over message if it's only a game over state now if I refresh we can see just the get ready state uh, I, I just need to add the event listener to the canvas, not the document. So this will take effect just when I click on the canvas. So now the state current is zero. When I click, it's one. It's the game state now. Now let's say the state to the over to two, which is the game over. And here you can see the message game over. Uh, so let's go back now to the logic part. So now let's talk about how to animate the bird. 
So how to make the bird flapping? So to remind you, this is uh, the bird object. This is the frame set to zero, the draw uh, method. Now we need another method, which is the update method. Inside the update method, we'll just update this that frame. So we'll just change this that frame to make the bird flap in. Again, to remind you, we have a loop function. Inside we had the request animation frame to create the loop. And we said we need to keep track of our frames. So we increment the, the frames variable by one each time we call the loop function. When the game starts, the frames variable is set to zero. And also, this that frame, the property of our bird here, is also set to zero. Now we need to check, or we will check, if the frames modulo 5 is equal to zero. If this is true, then we need to increment this that frame by one. Incrementing this that frame by one means changing the image of the bird we are drawing, which means creating an animation. This five here, this number here, we will talk about it later in this spot. So when the game starts, the frames is set to zero. This that frame is also set zero. This is true. Then right away, this that frame will be equal to one. When we draw the next frame, so the frames will be equal one. We increment the frames by one each time. If we check again this line of code, this time frames modulo five doesn't equal to zero. So we are not incrementing this that frame. So in general, we will increment this that frame by one only if the frames modulo five is equal to zero. Again, it's the same thing when the frames is equal to the three, the four. And then if the frames is equal to five, frames modulo five is equal to zero. Now we need to increment this dot frame by one. So this dot frame equals to two. All the way down to 10, it's not equal to zero. The modulo five doesn't equal to zero. So we won't increment this dot frame until 10. Again, until 15. So now you can get the idea. We are going to increment this dot frame by one each five frames. So we will change the bird image each five frames. In terms of code, we need to say frames modulo five equals to zero. We will check if this is true. If it's true, we said we will increment this dot frame by one. If it's not true, we'll increment it by zero, which means we are not increment this dot frame. So this line of code will increment this dot frame by one each five frames. Now let's talk about what will happen when we get, for example, to frames equal 20. In this case, frames modulo five is really equal to zero, which means we need to increment this dot frame by one. 4 plus 1 is 5. But this is a problem. This that animation array has only 4 elements. If we say this that animation with index 5, it will return an error. Instead, when we reach to the fourth frame here, we need to go back to 0. How to do that in terms of code? So, this that animation that length or the length of our array here is 4. The animation has only four elements. So we need to find a way for if this that frame is equal to zero, we keep it zero. If it's one, we keep it one, two, three. But if it's four, we need to go back to zero. To fix that, I will need to use the modulo operator again. So for example, if I say zero modulo four, this will return zero. So we just kept this that frame equal to zero. 1 modulo 4 is 1, 2 modulo 4 is 2, 3 modulo 4 is 3. But if we say that the frame equals 4, then 4 modulo 4 is equal 0. So this is it. So if it's 0, 1, 2, 3, we keep them that way. If it's 4, we go back to 0. So in terms of code, 
I will say this that frame equals this that frame modulo this that animation dot length. So zero modulo four is zero, one modulo four is one, and so on. But when we get to four modulo four, we go back to zero. The last thing you should know before going on typing the code is when the game start or when it's uh, the get ready state, the bird must flap slowly. But instead, if we are in the game state, the bird must flap faster. So the speed of flapping of the bird is based on the period. So the higher the period, the slowly is the flapping. So now you can know from where we get the five number here. Five here is just the period. So we need to say if the current state is the get ready state, the bird should flap slowly, means the period is equal to 10. Instead, if it's, for example, the game state, the bird must flap faster, so the period is 5. So here I'm going to set this line of code equal to this, that period. And instead of saying here 5, I'm going to say this, that period. So let's go. Let's now go and update our uh, or add an update method to our bird to make it uh, or to do the animation. So I'm gonna create a period based on the game state. If it's get ready, it's ten. If it's not, it's five. So the idea, if it's the game state uh, is ready, the bird must flop slowly, and then. We need to increment the frame uh, by one, right? Each period. So I'm going to say this dot frame plus equal if the frames modulo this that period is equal to uh, zero. Then we increment by one. If not, we increment by zero. Means we are not incrementing. Now, when the frame goes from zero to four. Then again, we need to go back to zero. So I'm going to say that this that frame equals this that frame modulo this that animation that length, which is equal to four. That's now called the update method of the bird. Now I can see the bird flapping. If I click on the canvas to go to the game state, you can see that the bird here is uh, going faster or is flapping faster. Let's now go back to the logic part. Now our bird must go to the top or to the bottom by speed. Go to the top when the user clicks on the canvas and go to the bottom by the gravity. So inside our bird uh, object, we will set the speed to zero when the game starts. The gravity is set to 0 0.25 and the jump or the flap is set to four pound sec. You could use different uh, values for the gravity and the jump. Now inside our update function, beside the alt code we use to the, the animation, I will say if it's the get ready state, the bird must stay here. It won't go neither to the top nor to the bottom. So I will just keep the y position of the bird at 150 pixels. Else we will change the y position of the bird by the speed. So if we increment the y position or if the speed is a positive number, the bird will go down. If the speed is a negative number, the bird will go to the top. So this that speed will be changed uh, based on the gravity, so the bird will go to the bottom or based on the users or the players click on the canvas, means when the bird flaps. So the speed here is always incrementing by the gravity. There's always gravity. So this that speed plus equal this that gravity will make the speed goes from the zero when the game starts to 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, 0 0.75. So each frame the speed will increment by 0 0.25. So you may say that the bird here is uh, going faster and faster to the bottom. Uh, and that's what we want. Let's say our bird just escaped from two pipes at the top of the canvas. Then suddenly two other pipes showed at the bottom of the 
canvas. So the bird must go from this place here to this place here in uh, a short time. So that's why we need our bird to go to the bottom faster. Uh, now, what will happen when the player clicks on, on the canvas? So we said that we need a flap method. So when the user clicks on the canvas and the game state, we should call this flap method. So what will this method uh, simply do is uh, change the speed by minus this dot jump. So the speed here is now a negative number. So the speed will go to the top, simple. Now when the bird uh, is going down and then uh, it hits the, the ground, it's a game over, which means we need to uh, use some collision detection. So this is the canvas dot height and this is the foreground dot height. So this place here is the canvas dot height minus foreground dot height because we're going to the top. Uh, whenever we go to the top, the y position is decremented. So that's why we use a minus sign here. Then this is the y position of the bird, its center, and this is its height. So the bottom of the bird is this dot y. This time we're going down. So we are incrementing the y position. So it's this dot y plus the height divided by two, half the height. So for our collision detection, we are going to uh, compare these two values here. So we're going to say if this value here is greater than this value here, means the bird is touching the, the ground, means it's a game over. So I'm going to say f this dot y plus this dot height divided by two, this value here is greater than or equal to this value here. Then I will keep the bird in that place. Right. So, so the y position here is always incremented by the speed. But we need to stop that when the bird hit the ground. So if this is true, we need to keep the bird in this y position. We need to keep the bird on the ground. We don't want it to go uh, to the bottom anymore. Then we will check if the current state is the game state. We will go from the game state to the game over state. Now let's go and make our bird move. Let's now move our bird. So the bird will move down with the gravity and goes down when the user uh, clicks on the canvas. So the gravity is 0 0.25, the jump is 4.6. So I'm gonna check here if the state of the game is the get ready state, else uh, if it's not the get ready, then we need to increment the speed by the gravity and then change the speed uh, or and then change the y position of the bird by the speed. Now let's refresh. If I click, the bird goes down. Let's now go and add the code for the flap method. So we will set the speed equal to minus this that jump. Let's go and try that again. Now if I click, the bird will go to the top. So that's great. Uh, okay, we need here when the bird, uh, or uh, we need to check if uh, it's a game over, if the bird touches the, the foreground. If it's true, we need to keep the bird in that position. I'm gonna take this to the other side. Then if the state, uh, if the current state is the game state, we need to change it to the to the to the game over state. Let's check that. Oh, okay. Now oh, there is something wrong. Something wrong with the code. Oh yeah, I, I should assign this to the current state, not check if it's the game over. Now, yeah, that's a game over, but the bird is still flopping. So we need to, to stop that. So here I need to set the Y position to 150. So we will set the position of the bird after the game over. So let's check that if I restart. 
that's good now let's go back and talk about the rotation okay let's now talk about how to rotate our bird so when uh, the bird is in the get rid of state its angle of rotation is zero degrees but if it's uh, flopping it fits to go into the top we need to change the rotation angle to minus 25 degrees but instead if the bird is falling down the rotation angle is 90 degrees the problem here is that we don't have any way to rotate the image we only can rotate the wool canvas so this is the origin of the canvas the top left corner of the canvas which has this x position 0 y position 0 this is the x axis and this is y axis to rotate the canvas you only need to say context dot rotate and then an angle another problem the angle here must be given in radian and we all don't use the radian we instead use degrees so let's say we need to rotate our uh, canvas by 45 degrees so i'm gonna go and say context dot rotate 45 times pi divided by 180 so this is a conversion we convert uh, from degrees to radians we will talk about this in a minute so if you say context that rotate by 45 degrees this will rotate the wool canvas by 45 degrees from the x-axis and of course the center of the rotation as the origin of our canvas now that you know this uh, we have our bird in this position right this is its x and y position so we need to rotate the bird so means the center of the rotation will be the center of the bird so we need to take the center of rotation from the origin to the x and y position of the bird right this is the first thing we're gonna do for that I will use the translate uh, method so I'm gonna translate the origin from here to the x and y position of the bird so I'm gonna say context that translate to this that x and this dot y the x and y position of the bird so it's like taking the wool canvas to this place here then I will say context that rotate by an angle and this will rotate our bird and of course this will go just at the top of where we draw our bird now you may say what about all the other uh, components like the background the foreground the, the pipes and the background itself they all will rotate and yes that's true everything will rotate so it fix here the problem and to just rotate the image of the bird all we need here is to save the old state of the canvas which means save the, uh, the rotation of the canvas save uh, its uh, origin and save uh, other properties so saving the state or the old state of the canvas then after doing this the rotation of our image then we need to restore to get back the old state now let's talk about the conversion so you all know that 180 degrees is pi in radian now let's now say we need to convert 45 degrees to radian so I'm gonna say x equals 45 degrees then times pi divided by 180 degrees all right so in other words I will say 45 times degree so instead of just writing this wool uh, thing by divided by 180 I will just go and uh, call this degree so in terms of code I will say const degree equals pi divided by 180 so now for our rotate method the angles must be given in radian and we will just go and write in for example 45 times degree which means we are writing the angles in degrees and also at the same time we are converting them into radians so now to rotate our bird inside our draw method 
we'll go and say context that rotate there's that rotation and this that rotation might be 45 times degree 90 times degree etc so inside our const bird we need first to create this uh, property here i'm gonna set it to zero then inside our draw function we had uh, the bird variable then the draw image before the rotation we need to do the translate so the translation from the uh, 0 0 origin to the bird origin and then uh, of course we need to save the alt state and restore it after that one last thing you need to consider here to really consider uh, after we translated the origin of 0 0 to the bird uh, origin or center in our draw image here I'm not saying anymore this that x minus this that we did divided by 2 why because now the origin is changed so simple and also here I'm gonna say just minus this that height divided by 2 right now the origin for the y position is the y position of our bird now this is the last update for uh, the method update of the bird so we have this code so far now when the bird is in the Q, uh, is in the get ready state which means here if the state that current is really the get ready state then we need to set the rotation of the bird to zero degrees now we said that we are incrementing the speed by the gravity let's say now that the player just clicked on the canvas this means that the bird will flap then right away the y position of the bird will be minus 4 pound 6 because when the bird flaps we change the speed to minus this that jump which is minus 40 pound 6 okay now let's say that the player didn't click on the canvas again so the bird will keep falling down until it reaches 4 pound 6 so when the bird goes from minus 4 pound 6 to 4 pound 6 means that the bird is falling down without any reaction from the player so here at this point we need to change the rotation of the bird to 90 degrees so here we need to check each time if the speed is greater than this that jump if that's true we need to set the rotation to 90 degrees else if the bird is flopping we need to change that to minus 25 degree another thing is when the bird is falling down uh, obviously the bird isn't flapping anymore so we need a way to make the bird stop flapping which means we need a way to make this that frame from uh, changing which means we need just to say this that frame equals one so we just set this that frame to one and that will stop the bird flapping last thing before we go to type in the code the bird uh, must be looking like it's going forward right to make that happen we'll just create an illusion so instead of the bird going forward the foreground here we go to the left so if we are moving the foreground to the left that will makes us or that will gives us a feeling that the bird is going uh, to the right so we need to move the ground to the left by delta x by 2 so we are changing the x position by delta x it means i will need an update function that will just do that but only if the game state is the current state we don't want to move the foreground when it's a game over right so uh, inside the f statement i will decrement the x position by delta x but you may see a problem here if we just keep decrementing the x position by delta x the wall foreground will leave our canvas so to fix that what we need to do is to keep moving the foreground to the left until some point and then take it back to zero to do that we will use this code modulo this that we did divided by two what this code means it means that keep uh, decrementing the x position by delta x 
until you move the foreground by the widget divided by 2, then go back and set the X position to 0. Okay, let's see an example here to understand clearly. So this is our code here, right? In, in terms of numbers, this is 0 when the, uh, when the game starts, minus 2 modulo 224, the width it here, divided by 2. Uh, so this is 0 minus 2 modulo 112, which is minus 2 modulo 112, which is minus 2. So we just moved the foreground from 0 for the x position to minus 2. Let's continue. So minus 2 minus 2, now it's minus 4 modulo 112, it's minus 4. Minus 6, then minus 8, and so on. When we reach minus 100, minus 2 modulo 112, it's minus 110 modulo 112, it's minus 110. Now, minus 2, it's minus 112 modulo 112, it's 0. So we just go from 0 to the half with it of the foreground then go back to zero. So let's go and type this part of the code. So I will first need to go and create the constant degree for the conversion. And then inside the update method or the bird, I will create the rotation property. Now inside the draw uh, method, I will save and restore the state of the canvas then translate the origin to the x and y position of the bird. And then I will rotate the, the canvas. Now inside our update function, in this case the rotation is zero, 0 degrees and here f the speed is greater than the jump means that the the bird is falling down so I'm gonna say f this that speed is greater than the jump if it's true then this rotation here is equal to 90 degrees then else the rotation is minus 25 degrees so let's check that so here you can see that the bird, uh, the rotation is uh, applied. Now when the bird touches the ground, uh, he must stop flapping, right? So here I will set the frame to 1. So now if the bird hits the ground, it will stop flapping. Now let's go and uh, make our ground or foreground moving so I'm gonna add an update method here so I'm gonna uh, move the foreground only if it's a game state so I'm gonna say this that x equals this that x minus this dot delta x delta x here is set to true then modulo the half the with it I need here to add the update method inside our update function so now let's check uh, that so now you can see or you can get the feeling that the bird is going forward now let's get back again to the logic part so what's missing from our game are the pipes and like for all the other objects we will create one for the pipes just here we have two pipes the bottom pipe and the top one uh, this is the source uh, x and y position for the bottom one and this is the source x and y position for the top one. Then the both pipes have the same width and the same height. We have here a gap which is 80 and 5 pixels and then the pipes will go to the left by 2 pixels which means we need a delta x property here like the foreground. Also, we have an update method 
and a draw method. Now, whenever we create a pair of pipes, those pipes should always appear in this position, which means every new pair of pipes will have this position or this X position. And then what will change between a pair of pipes and another, it's the Y position. So this has this Y position and this one will have this Y position. We are not going to type in the Y position of all the pipes. Instead, we are going to calculate the Y position randomly. Here, max Y position is the maximum Y position of the top uh, pipe, which is set to 150 minus 150 because we are going to the top. This is zero, and here are minus or the negative numbers. Math that random will return numbers between zero and one. So we added a one here. So minus 150 times zero plus one is minus and 150. So this is the maximum y position. Then minus 150 when random method will return 1, it will be minus 300 for the y position. So the maximum y position is 150 and the minimum y position is minus 300 pixels. Now this x y position here adjust the position of the top pipe. Uh, later on we will calculate the y position of the bottom pipe. If you know the uh, position of the top pipe then you can figure out the x and y position of the bottom pipe because the gap here is always the same. Now we have multiple pair of pipes they are in our game which means we need to store those x and y position of every pipe inside or somewhere. The best place to save them is an array. So here I'm gonna add a new uh, property which is position for the position of the top pipe which is an array. So each time we create a new pair of, uh, of pipes we will push this x and y position to our position array. But we are not going to add all the uh, pipes position uh, at once to our position array. We will do that just every 100 frames. So every 100 frames we will add a new position uh, to our position array. And of course we won't create any pipes if it's not the game state. So I will say f the current state is not the game state then we say return. So here if the current state is not the game state, this code here won't run. Let's now talk about drawing the pipes. So we have here two pipes, which means we need to use the draw image two times. The only difference is the source x and the source y position. This is the source x for the top and this is the source x for the bottom. So that's the only difference between these lines of codes. And of course, because the x and y position are inside an array, we need to use a full loop to loop over that array and get those x and y positions. Uh, so to not type in this line of code again and again, we will set this to a variable called p. So this that position with index i has two properties, x and y position. So to get them, we will say p x, and p dot y. Now for our pipes here, they have always the same x position, which is given by p dot x. So here in our draw image method, we will see p dot x for the x position and the same for the bottom pipe. For the y position, we will say here top y position and here bottom y position, which we calculate at the top here. Now for the top pipe here, the y position is given by p dot y. So here top y pos is equal to p dot y. Now for the bottom y position. So this is the p dot y position. This is the height of the pipe and this is the gap. 
So the y position of the bottom pipe is given by p dot y plus this dot height plus this dot gap. So the bottom y position is given by this. Now this wall code here we go inside our draw function. Now let's talk about moving the pipes. To move the pipes it's easy inside our update function where we create the position of every pipe we will add a full loop to loop over our uh, array position and again I will create a variable p so I won't need to type in this line of code and I will just decrement the x position of every pipe by delta x which is set to 2 if you remember now when the pipes reaches this position which means the pipes goes beyond our canvas we need to get rid of them we need to remove them for our position array so this is the x position of the pipe this is there with it and this uh, position here is p dot x plus this dot with it and also this position here is zero so we'll check if this value here is less than zero this means that the pipes uh, gone beyond our canvas so I'm gonna add an F statement here and then use the shift method so what shift method will do is remove the first uh, element of our canvas because the first pipes that will get here is the first element in our canvas then if the pipes goes beyond our canvas means that there was no collision between them and the bird which means that the player gain a pound which means we need to increment the score by one so let's go and type in the code for this part so let's go and add the code for the pipes so we're gonna create uh, an object so we have here the position array then the top uh, pipe the source x position and y position then uh, the bottom uh, pipe this is its x and y source position then the width is uh, 53 pixels the height is 400 pixels the gap is 85 pixels and the maximum y position is set to 100 uh, minus 150 pixels delta x is 2 now the draw method I'm going to use a full loop to loop over our position array and then uh, create a variable so I won't have to type in the whole line again then I will calculate the top pipe y position and the bottom y position the bottom pipe y position now uh, I will use the draw method I will just go and copy this line here so here it's it's the one for the top pipe top pipe the y position here uh, is given by the top y position and for the bottom pipe here I'm gonna say bottom and then the y position here is given by the bottom y position then for the update method I will go and uh, uh, and check if the current state is the game state if it's not we say return and then every 100 frames we will add uh, a new position to our position array using the push method inside we have the x property and the y property so the x and y position of the top uh, pipe now we need to use the full loop to loop over our array position then I'm gonna create again the p variable 
now I will need just to decrement the pipe X position by delta X. Okay, here I have uh, to say P dot X and also here, not this dot X. So let's uh, add update method to our update function. And here we need to draw the pipes. Let's save this. If I click now, uh, I can see the pipes come in. Now, when the pipes goes beyond our canvas, we should uh, remove them from the, the array. So I'm going to say f p dot x plus this dot with it is less than zero. Then we need to use the the shift method. I'm going to say this that position dot shift. So now let's go back to the logic part and talk about the collision detection. Let's now talk about the collision detection. So we will suppose that our bird here is a circle that has a radius of 12 pixels. Uh, so inside our bird, we will uh, add a property called radius, which is set to 12. Then inside our pipes and exactly inside our update inside the full loop we will uh, calculate the bottom pipe y position first this is our bird which we consider uh, a circle uh, so the right side of the bird is now the bird that acts which is the center of our bird plus the bird radius then the left side is the center bird that acts minus the bird radius the top is the y position minus the bird radius and the bottom is the board y plus the bird radius now there is a collision if there is an intersection between the the bird and the pipe so like saying if the bird gets inside our pipe so when the bird gets inside our pipe the bird gets inside our pipe if the right side of the bird is greater than the left side of the pipe so i'm going to say if the bird x plus the bird radius is greater than p that x and also if the, the left side of the bird is less than the right side of the pipe and also if the bottom of the bird which is this value here, is greater than this value here. And also, if the top of the bird, this value here, is less than this value here, the pipe Y position plus uh, the height. So if this happens, or if this is true, if the statement here is true, we set the current state to the game over state. We also need to check if there is a collision between the bottom pipe and the, the bird. We will do the same thing. So uh, we will check again if the right side of the bird with the left side of the pipe and so on. The only difference here is here we have the bottom pipe Y which we calculated uh, here now if also this is true we set the current state to the game over state so i can i can really put this inside uh, one f statement but i chose to spirit the code so it will be more readable so let's add this part to our code the first thing is I will go and calculate the, the bottom pipe y position and it's p dot y plus this dot height plus this dot gap and then uh, for the collision detection we need to detect the collision with the top pipe and the bottom pipe so for the top pipe I will say f bird dot x plus bird dot radius is 
greater than the p dot x. I also need to create the radius first, which is 20 or 12 pixels. Uh, and f the bird that x minus the bird that radius is less than the pipe that x plus this that width and f the bird that y plus the bird that radius is greater than the uh, the pipe that y and the bird that y minus the bird radius is less than the pipe that y plus this that height and then we set the current state to the game over state I will just go and copy this for the bottom pipe collision detection I will change just the y position here to bottom pipe y position and the same thing here let's save this okay the one for the top pipe works let's go and check the one for the bottom oh it's not working okay there is a problem with my code doesn't work okay my 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 code looks just fine where's the problem okay Okay, let's take this to the bottom. Oh yeah, here is the problem. I shouldn't see p dot x. I should say p dot y. Okay, let's take this to the bottom uh, and add a comment saying move the pipes to the the left. Now if I refresh, let's check for the top pipe and yes, refresh. Let's check for the bottom pipe and it's working. That's good. And now let's go and talk about the score. So the last thing is the score and the sounds. Let's now talk about how to show the score to the user. For that we need uh, an object called score, which has these properties, the best for the best score, then the value, the value of the score, the actual score, and then a draw function. Inside our draw function here, we will need to set the fill style. It is the color that with we will uh, fill in the the text. Then the stroke style. The stroke of this text is black. Now in our game, uh, we will show the score to the user in the game state and also in the game over state. The game over state will show the actual score and also the best score. So we need to use an F statement. So we need to check the current state. If it's the game state, we show just this one. And if it's the game over state, we show both the actual and the best score. So as you can see here, there is a difference in the font size. So I'm gonna set uh, the font property uh, here. It is equal to 35 pixels for, uh, for the font size and for the font family is take off. Then uh, also here, it's just 25 pixels and the same font family. Also, we need to make this text here bold. So I'm gonna uh, change the line width property to two. Then uh, to draw the text, we will use the fill text method that takes in three parameters. The text itself, the text you wanna draw, as the value of the score then uh, it's x position so the score here will be shown in, in, in the middle so it's canvas that will be divided by 2 and 50 pixels from the top for the y position I also need to draw a stroke a black stroke uh, and the, the stroke text here method will take in the same parameters as the fill text here at the bottom for the game over state, 
I will show the text or the score value and also the best score. So they both have the same x position but uh, y position is different. Now the question is how do we calculate the best score? So if you remember we increment the value of the score by one whenever one of the pipes or a pair of the pipes goes beyond our canvas. So uh, at the bottom of that line of code when we increment the value we will add this code. So we will use the max method. This max method will take in the score value and the score best. So it will check which one here is the greater one and then set it to score that best. So if the score that value is greater than the score that best, then the score that best will get the value here. And, and instead if the score that best is the one that's greater, so the score that best will remain the same. We also need to save the best score. For that we'll use our local storage. So I will say local storage, that's set item. And the key here is best. Then the value I'm storing is the score that best. The key here, best, is important for when you want to get the item from the local storage. You really need to give the, uh, the key of what you want to get from the local storage. So when the game starts, instead of saying best is set to zero, we really need to check if there is no value in the local storage. So I'm going to say best is set to local that get item with the key best. But what if there is nothing in our uh, local storage? So we need to say all zero. So if our local storage is empty, then we set the best here property to zero. And also whatever we get from our local storage, we need to change it to uh, an integer. So let's go. Let's go and create the score object. So we have here uh, the best score, which we get from the local storage. If there's nothing in the local storage, we set it equal to zero. Then the value of the score, the actual score, is set to zero. Then a draw uh, function, uh, the fill style, the color of the text is white. Then I will say f, the current state is the game state, else if the current state is the game over state. What will change here is the font. So here I will add a line width and the font here will be uh, or the font size 35 pixels and take over for the font family. Then I will use the fill text uh, method. We'll show the actual uh, here, the actual score. And then we'll uh, draw a stroke which is black. I'm going to say stroke text. It will take the same parameters. I would go and copy this here, but I still need to first. So first I will need to set the font. It's 25 pixels. The width is 225. The height 225 and 228. Let's now add the draw method to our draw function. And here we need to update the score whenever the pipes go is beyond the canvas. And then we need to check the maximum value between the, the score that value and the score that best. Then we need to store the item to the local storage using the set item method. So let's go and check that. So now you can see the score is incrementing. Okay, now it shows the score as three and the best is three. Let's recheck that. Oh, it says 
0. This must show 3. So what is the problem here? Okay, here I should say best, not value. Rad best. Let's uh, go and check that again. Good. Okay, so now the score is 3, the best is 3. Let's recheck that. Okay, it's enough. And yes, now it's working. Now let's go and update our click event. So let's update our click event code. So the code is looking like this so far. Now uh, when it's a game over, the user must restart the, the game just using the start button here. So if he clicks somewhere in the canvas, the game must not restart. So to do that, we need to check where the player clicked. So we need to check if he really clicked on the start button or not. So we need to get the position of where the user really clicked. For that, I will uh, use the event here, that client X. This will return the X position of where the player clicked. And also here, the Y position of where the user clicked. But that's not enough because, for example, let's say, if the user scrolled down the page. If the user scrolled down the page, the position of the canvas will change. If the position of the canvas changes, then also the start position here, or the position of the start button will also change. So then our start button will not work anymore. So to take that in mind, we need to get the position of the canvas each time we scroll down the page. So for that we have a a method called get bound in client rect. This will return the size of our canvas and also its position uh, relative to a viewport, which means whenever you scroll down, the position of the canvas will change. And to keep track of the changes, we will use this method here. So we simply need here to subtract the rect that left of the canvas and also the rect that top. Of the canvas. What this means is that we will subtract the rect that left or whatever we uh, was added to the left of the canvas when we scroll the page to the right and also we need to take off or subtract whatever is added to the top of our canvas when we scroll down the page. Right, now we need also to know the position of the button the start button. So their position are given by this, the x, y, and the width and height of the start button. So here I will need just to check or use an if statement. I'm going to check if the click x and the click y are inside the start button. So I'm going to say if click x is greater than the start button dot x and uh, if it's less than uh, the start button X plus the start button with it, like we did in the, the collision detection. And then we'll check if the Y position is bigger than or is greater than the Y position and is less than the Y position plus the height of the button. If this is true, that's where we need to uh, go to the get ready state. And also we need to reset the speed of the bird which means we need to add a new method to our bird uh, object that will just set the bird at speed to zero. Then also we need to reset the pipes, which will go and reset our uh, position array. And also we need to reset the score, which means I will add a method to the score uh, object that will set the value of the score to zero. So let's go and update our code. So let's go up and add our start button uh, X and Y and with it and height properties. So start button X is 120 Y and width and the height. Then uh, here I will need to uh, get bound in client rect of our canvas 
then the click uh, exposition is given by this the click y position and now I will add an F statement to check if we click uh, on the start button or not so I'm gonna say click X is greater than the start button plot that X and the click X is less than the start button dot X plus the width and uh, click Y is greater than the start button dot Y and click Y position is less than the Y position plus the height so if this is true then we need to change uh, or to go to the get ready state and also we need to reset the pipes uh, reset the speed of the bird and also reset the score let's go and add this uh, this this methods so here I'm gonna say speed reset is a function this that speed is set to zero and inside our pipes object I will add also a reset method that will uh, empty our position array and also for the score I will add a reset method that will reset the value and set it to zero so let's save this and refresh okay there's a problem the console uh, at line 26 oh yeah here's the problem now let's save this and refresh let's check that Okay, now if I lose, if I click somewhere in the canvas, that won't uh, work unless I click on the start button. And everything now is reset, like the score, the pipes, the speed of the bird, etc. The last thing now is adding sounds. The sounds lives inside the audio uh, directory. So we need first to load uh, the sounds, like we you used or like we loaded the image here I will use the audio constructor and then use or add the the source property for our score sound object Then I will just copy this uh, five times. Here is the one for the flap, the one for the head, the one for swooshing, and then the last one for when the bird dies. So here I will say flap, then head, then swooshing, and then die. So here goes the one for the swatching and here goes the one for when the bird flaps. So here to to play the sounds you just need to add the or to call the play method. Here we will add the die uh, sound and here I will add the the head sound so this is when the bird hit one of the pipes and here we uh, play the score sound so now you can hear the sounds let's do that again and that's it 
So guys, this is it. This is the end of our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment and uh, like my video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for the next tutorial. Goodbye.